We're on lesson four of chapter five, which is coordinate geometry. First, we're going to use coordinates to classify polygons. Then we're going to find the coordinates of a missing vertex. Then we're going to find the coordinates of a midpoint. Plotting geometric shapes on a, on a coordinate plane or a grid is a very useful skill to know, especially if you're looking into going into computer design, which is a very high demand field these days. When designers design figures, they put in coordinates based on a 0 to 300 scale, and that tells you where to put the shape and what shape it actually is going to be. So we're going to do something very similar to that, except on a coordinate plane. So for example, it says graph the polygons with the given vertices. Give the most specific name for each polygon. So we're just going to plot out the points, and then we're going to find out what shape that makes. For A is negative 1 for X and 2 for Y, so I'm going to use red for this. Negative 1 for X, 2 for Y. Negative 1 for X, negative 2 for Y. So that would be a 3, negative 2. So if I'm going to plot these points out, then I'll use a line from this point to this point. From this point to this point this point to this point. Now, I can clearly see that this is a triangle. However, it says give the most specific name for each polygon. So to do that, I need to look at the measures of the angles. So here I see this is a right angle, which would make it a right triangle. But I also see that this length is 4, so I'm going to put 4 here. And the length for this one is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a change of 4 for y as well. Whenever you have a triangle with two sides that are the same, it's an isosceles triangle. So you would say isosceles right triangle and that would be my most specific name for this polygon. Let's plot out this figure then. We have negative 1 and positive 3. So there's that point. We have 2 positive 1 and 2 and negative 3 and then negative 1 and negative 3. And then you draw lines. We'll connect these points, these points, these, and this one. If we're looking at this, these look like 90 degree angles here, here, and here. These are not. So that means it's not a rectangle. So I only see one pair of parallel lines here. These would not be parallel lines. So that makes us a trapezoid, only having one pair of parallel lines. So a trapezoid would be the most specific name for this polygon. Now we need to fill in a missing vertex here. So it says triangle ABC has a right angle at B. So here's where the right angle would be. And AB, the line AB equals 4. Find one set of possible coordinates for A. So since it's a right triangle, that would be a perfectly perpendicular line, meaning it would either go this way, directly along this line, or down directly along this line. Um, I know that the length of the line that, that goes with it would have to be 4. So I'm not going to go down because I only have room for 3 spots here. I'm going to go up. Although I could have gone that way. That's just fine. So I'm going to count up from here. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is where I'm going to want to make my point A. And then I can draw my triangle from there. And there we have it. So here's A. So the coordinate for A would be positive 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So positive 2, positive 6. This one's a little more tricky. It's a quadrilateral. So quadrilateral LMNP is a parallelogram. So that means this line needs to be parallel with this line, and this line needs to have a parallel partner over here. So find the coordinates of M. So we need to find a fourth coordinate that'll match that. Well, since all the lines are parallel, that means that the opposite sides need to be the same length, and I can use that to my advantage here. I see that this line is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 segments, so I will go 5 segments from right here. So we're going to count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now that I have my fourth point, I can connect the lines to those spots and see if that matches up. So we'll go from N to M from L to M, and this looks awfully parallel, and so do these, so this would be a parallelogram. So this is point M right in the corner here. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for X, and 1, 2, 3 for Y. So M equals 5 and 3. 
Our last task is to find the coordinates of a midpoint. Midpoint means the middle of a line segment. So we have the segment points A and B. It's the middle of that. Sometimes it's actually very difficult to find. Like, what is this exactly? So for finding the midpoint of AB, this could be a little bit of a challenge. What you can do then is you could find the middle between the x values of A and B, and then the y values of A and B, and when you put that together, it's going to be right on this line in the middle of the segment. So I know the x value for A, so we're going to write x values here, underline that. I know the x value for A is negative 3. And I know the x value for B is positive 4. So B would be positive 4. To find the average of this, I could just add them together and divide by 2, because there's only two of them, just like finding the mean. So negative 3 plus 4 equals 1. So 1 divided by 2 would be 0.5. So I know that the x value, if I'm going to write the coordinate point here, x value is 0 0.5. Now let's find the y values. So a for the y value would just be 1. b would be 1, 2, 3, 4. If we're going to find the mean or the average between these two, we would add them together and divide by 2. 1 plus 4 is 5, so 5 divided by 2. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So 0 0.5 and 2.5 would be my point. So let's place that on here. 0 0.5 for x, 2.5 for y, and look at that, it is right on the line. So this would be the exact midpoint, 0 0.5, 2.5 of A and B. So I'll circle this as my answer.